Yeah. Unlike the British, the Spanish still buy most of their fresh produce from markets. So what would Madrid shoppers think of our perfect looking UK supermarket fruit? So I'm beginning to understand the difference between supermarkets across Europe and those back home in the UK. People here shop differently. They like to touch their food, they like to smell it, and they certainly like it to have taste. Plus, they know what's in season. Back home, we don't seem to know or care about any of that. So what happens is that our supermarkets are able to sell us what suits them, what suits their system. It seems that all they need to do to get us to buy things is to just make sure that it looks perfect. Next, more supermarket secrets. What's in your kid's packed lunch? And the myth of cheap supermarket produce. Supermarkets like to claim credit for the fact that on average we're spending much less on our food than we used to. That's to do with all of us, you know, the whole society getting more affluent. It's not true for the people on the lowest incomes. They still spend just as much on food. And I think this is a great myth. Supermarkets haven't given us cheap quality food. They've given us some foods at a loss, which are fantastically cheap, but it's very expensive to eat well now. Supermarkets might keep the price of known value items like white bread and milk artificially low, but what about fresh produce? Well, I'm off to my not-so-local greengrocers now, hence the car. When I was a kid, my mum had quite a range of local shops to choose from, but for most of us, that's very much a thing of the past. And it's a popular perception that if you buy your fruit and veg in the supermarket, it's going to be a lot cheaper than if you do manage to find um, a local provider. So I thought I'd put that to the test. Look, how fresh is that? It's still got the soil on it. Never see that in the supermarket. Strawberries. I wonder if they're El Santa. I made sure I was comparing like with like by buying the same quantities of similar quality supermarket fruit and vegetables. Okay, so this is the shop that I did this morning at my little not so local greengrocers. Then I went to the three supermarkets that are nearest to my house. That's Tesco, Sainsbury's, and Asda. What about the prices? Well, the supermarkets all came out very very similar in price of course they're locked in price wars so they keep a sharp eye on this but here's uh, Tesco's that was the cheapest at seven pound thirty then we had Asda at seven pound fifty nine then Sainsbury's was slightly more expensive at seven pounds sixty three so what about my local greengrocer well a lot of people we spoke to said that they shop at supermarkets because they say that they're cheaper well, £6.61 at my local greengrocer. So proof, if you need it, that today this was the cheapest. If fresh supermarket produce isn't cheap, prepared fruit and vegetables are downright expensive. 
Thanks to the supermarket, love is added value, which is where you take something that's really essentially a very simple product for which you can't charge very much and do something to it uh, in order to be able to charge much more. Um, so the classic example is the bag of salad. Salad. To save you time, we pick it, trim it, wash it, mix it, and pack it. In fact, all you have to do is pop it and take it off the shelf. This advert appeals to our lazy side. Every little helps. And it works. Bag salads exploded onto the market in 1992. Now over 60% of us buy them regularly. And boy, have they been a nice little earner for the supermarkets. I've just bought this bag of prepared iceberg lettuce from Asda. And at the same time, I bought this whole iceberg lettuce. Now, the one in the bag cost me 66 pence for 200 grams, whereas the whole one cost me 58 pence for 512 grams. That's a 300% markup by Asda. Still, look on the bright side. It must have saved me, ooh, at least 30 seconds. And there's another thing. There's more in some salad bags than just bag salad. Inside, there's a special cocktail of gases, which prolongs its shelf life by up to 10 days. It's called modified atmosphere packaging. And the whole idea is to slow down that living process, or really to slow down the process of deterioration. Once they're opened, of course, they then have a very short shelf life, because suddenly the processes that we've slowed down in this modified atmosphere um, suddenly all kick in again and very quickly maybe that explains why i'm constantly chucking away bags of ready washed salad that seem to go manky in the blink of an eye all over britain we parents worry about what we're feeding our kids experts tell us they're getting fatter and fatter and more and more children are being diagnosed with diet related illnesses like type 2 diabetes Ever since Jamie Oliver told us about some of the rubbish that can be found in school dinners, parents up and down the country have been preparing packed lunches for their children. They want them to have simple, nutritious food. But take a look at this lot. Let's start with this drink. It's from the Sainsbury's Blue Parrot Cafe range, and it says on the packaging that it's a range of healthier foods for kids that's been developed with nutritionists. But healthier than what? This orange juice drink, in fact, doesn't have that much orange juice in it, only about 10%, and it has more sugar than a can of Coke. But surely fresh fruit and veg must be really good for children, like this chopped melon, for example, ideal for lunch boxes. Trouble is, recent research by Witch magazine has shown that pre-prepared packaged melon like this can lose up to 58% of its vitamin C content. What's more, the supermarkets are making a fortune out of the packed lunch market. You pay through the nose for handy packs like these carrots, which can cost up to three times more than if you bought fresh carrots and prepared them yourself. And even those handy little cheeses like this Sainsbury's Red Leicester can end up costing nearly twice as much as cutting and wrapping the cheese yourself. So there you have it. Supermarkets like to give us added value, but who really gains? They say they make our lives easier, but is convenience really worth the cost to our animals, our farmers, our environment, and most of all, our food? They're not about being great grocers or supplying us with good food or supporting British agriculture or being nice to turkeys or helping working mothers find good food for their children. That's not really what they're about. What they're about is making money and they do that ruthlessly and very effectively. Forty years ago, shopping was a time-consuming business, but shoppers knew what to look for and what it was worth. Today, the supermarkets want us to think that they do all of that for us, on our behalf. Personally, I think it's high time we relearnt some of those old shopping skills.
Gillian McKeith has loads of advice on the grub you chew. You are that you eat Wednesday at 8.30.